within the single expanse, supremely spacious by nature, awakened mind equal to space is pivotal. Focus on this key point and distill it to its vital essence. It is the greatest of the great, wholly positive and spacious enlightened mind. In its very essence, it thoroughly shatters the outer confines of reality. Within this single vast expanse, there is no duality of realization versus its lack, of freedom versus its lack. but a supreme state of equalness. A Garuda, whose wings have grown within the egg, abides in the expanse of the sky once it breaks out of the egg. It overwhelms Nagas and crosses directly over abysses. So also a fortunate yogin who has realized the Vajra heart essence just as it is. The pinnacle of all spiritual approaches outshines those following lower approaches and crosses directly over the abyss of samsara. The freedom of everything, abiding in a supreme state of equalness, is unacceptable to those involved in cause and effect, effort and achievement. But in the most sublime approach, it makes perfect sense as the ultimate meaning of unwavering equalness.
everything is supreme bliss, equal to space itself. The expanse of Dharmakaya. There is nothing that is not free within the expanse of Dharmakaya. The true nature of everything is experienced intuitively as the Kaya of the Vajra Heart Essence. The dynamic energy of this Heart Essence is perfect within the body born of habitual patterns. Once the body of conditioned existence between birth and death is cast off, awareness is experienced as a oneness, in no way divisible. Once one has gained the empire on the level of spontaneous presence, emanations occur without restriction. and one can engage in every situation without impediment. Such is the domain of a yogin who is effortlessly born on the wind. While this is unacceptable to anyone involved in lower spiritual approaches, it is shown by the Atti approach to make perfect sense. It is the key point of the fruition. Since the magical illusion of origination occurs within what has no origin, it is the ordinary confused mind that characterizes things as involving causality. What the Atti approach reveals is the absence of causes or conditions makes eminently perfect sense. Although it is unacceptable in lower approaches. The intent and conduct of Buddhas and ordinary beings are not separate. So it is the ordinary confused mind 
that holds samsara and nirvana to be a duality. What the Atti approach reveals as non-dual makes eminently perfect sense, although it is unacceptable in lower approaches. Given the freedom in which it is irrelevant whether or not one has realization, to believe that freedom comes about through realization is the enemy of equalness. What the Atti approach reveals as a single state of equalness makes eminently perfect sense, although it is unacceptable in lower approaches. To hold that one cannot realize the inexpressible without relying on specific means to characterize it is a fool's attitude. What the Atti approach reveals as inseparability from the ultimate makes eminently perfect sense although it is unacceptable in lower approaches. Although great perfection is timeless and infinite, without fixed depth or extent, to claim that it is unfathomable is a fool's attitude. What the Atti approach reveals as a boundless unique state makes eminently perfect sense, although it is unacceptable in lower approaches.
The usual order of things is reversed within the single sphere of being. And so hope and fear concerning the fruition are cut through. A state equal to space. So vast, so supreme, the enlightened mind of victorious ones is equal to space. There is no renunciation or attainment. The expanse of the single sphere. This is timeless freedom. It is irrelevant whether or not one has realization. A yogin is content on the path equal to space, with nothing needing to be done. This timelessly awakened awareness that entails no object does not wander in samsara, for it is beyond all basis for confusion. No one at all is confused. For there is no context for confusion. Everything lies within the scope of the basic space of phenomena, a single lucid expanse. With no time frame, this spaciousness is equal to space itself. Samsara is primordially pure, a timeless and spontaneously present state of utter relaxation. One does not enter a state of freedom or attain nirvana. The unchanging vast expanse, samsara and nirvana 
have never known existence. Here, there is no frame of reference for renunciation or attainment, hope or fear, but rather a supremely spacious expanse that is the primordially enlightened ground of being. All things are mere labels. For in actuality, they are beyond characterization or expression. Having decisively experienced that samsara is not confusion and nirvana is not freedom, let no one make any effort. Let no one try to meddle with or alter this. Awareness with no breadth or depth is not subject to restrictions or extremes, so give up any frame of reference. Awareness involving no plans or actions, no coming or going entails no time frame or antidote, so drop reification and effort. If there is a deliberate frame of reference, it is a cause of bondage. Do not rely on any fixed construct whatsoever. Let go in evenness. It is of no concern whether or not all phenomena are timelessly free. It is of no concern whether or not the way of abiding is pure by nature.
it is of no concern whether or not mind itself is free of elaboration. It is of no concern whether or not anything has ever existed within the fundamentally unconditioned genuine state. It is of no concern whether or not samsara and nirvana are by nature a duality. It is of no concern whether or not all thoughts and expressions are transcended. It is of no concern whether or not confused attempts at proof and refutation are demolished. It is of no concern whether or not the view to be realized has been realized. It is of no concern whether or not you meditate on the ultimate meaning of the true nature of phenomena. It is of no concern whether or not you engage in examination, since there is nothing to accept or reject. It is of no concern whether or not the way of abiding has ever existed as the fruition. It is of no concern whether or not you have traversed the paths and levels of realization. It is of no concern whether or not you are free of all obscurations. It is of no concern whether or not the development and completion stages perfect your true nature. It is of no concern whether or not the fruition of liberation is attained.
it is of no concern whether or not you wander in the six states of samsara. It is of no concern whether or not the nature of being is spontaneous presence. It is of no concern whether or not you are bound by dualistic perceptions of affirmation and denial. It is of no concern whether or not you have arrived at the enlightened intent of the true nature of phenomena. It is of no concern whether or not you follow in the footsteps of the masters of the past. No matter what arises, even if heaven and earth change places, there is a bare state of relaxed openness without any underlying basis. Without any reference point, nebulous, ephemeral and evanescent. This is the mode of a lunatic. Free of the duality of hope and fear. With unbiased view and meditation, ordinary consciousness that is caught up in reification collapses. Without the entanglements of wishful thinking, there is no thing to strive for or achieve. Let whatever happens happen, and whatever manifests, manifest.
let whatever occurs, occur, and whatever is, be. Let whatever is anything at all, be nothing at all. With your conduct unpredictable, you make the final leap into awareness, without the slightest basis for determining what is spiritual or not. And so this bare state with no reference point is beyond the cage of philosophy. Whether eating, moving around, lying down, or sitting, day and night, you rest in infinite evenness. So that you experience the true nature of phenomena as their equalness. There are no gods to worship, no demons to exorcise, nothing to cultivate in meditation. This is a completely ordinary state. With this single state of evenness, the uncontrived ruler that has no pride, there is oneness, a relaxed and unstructured openness. How delightful! Things are timelessly ensured without having to be done. And being free of effort and achievement, you are content. Given that there is no basis for the view or specific context for meditation, there is no factor of conduct or fruition to accomplish. Since everything is infinitely uniform 
in undifferentiated equalness. There is no need for concerted effort. In the absence of any fixed dimension, you are content. Since there is no speculation, ordinary ideas of achievement come to an end. Since there is nothing to abandon, antidotes, constricting fixations, are transcended. There is not the slightest sense of there being anything or everything, or even something that is or is not. And so whatever manifests, whatever arises, is inevitably free. Phenomena are ineffable. They do not exist as timelessly free, naturally free, or not free. And so the single state of evenness, with no reference point, is beyond being any phenomenon that could be decisively experienced. Within the spacious expanse, the spacious expanse, the spacious, vast expanse, I, Longchen Rabjung, for whom the lucid expanse of being is infinite, experience everything as embraced within a blissful expanse. A single, non-dual expanse. I, Natsok Rangjo, has reached the point of natural freedom where phenomena resolve. Unchanging spontaneous presence is the pinnacle of my excellent counsel. Moreover, you who follow my example, bring everything together thus within the timeless range of a single vast expanse.
In this way, you will gain the ongoing state of authentic being on the level of Samantabhadra. This is the ninth section of the precious treasury of the basic space of phenomena, demonstrating the decisive experience that one comes to concerning all phenomena within the expanse of awakened mind. 